Hi guys and welcome back to one of my videos, Paolo here, gt 4 model walk. And um, the model I would like to introduce to you today is uh, the latest build I made. It's referred to a Pantera GTS or Group 4. Uh, Pantera is a ultra famous car that don't need any introduction, you know, they race it in several countries and for decades you know and it always have been a very very nice and aggressive look uh, uh, sports car the Tommaso Pantera the model unfortunately uh, doesn't exist uh, uh, this version at least in 124 scale and uh, just uh, I think recently have been produced by Fujimi in the ordinary Pantera slimmer body version so without the flares on the on the wheel arches and um, is a pretty decent model despite I guess it should be curbside I don't have that model uh, right now because I started this adventure several several years ago and I was nearly done for uh, nearly 10 years you know and uh, later on I will explain why and Fujimi just uh, recently made this plastic box that I think you can find sometimes uh, somewhere uh, uh, online and uh, is a decent model I think the, the overall look is nice even if as I said it's uh, mostly referred to the ordinary Pantera the Tommaso uh, body so not the enlarged uh, anabolic version that I made uh, this model that I build up here it was an original kit made by Ari from Japan and uh, the model itself it was a uh, uh, how to describe it mostly uh, I always suggest to the guys that write me in Facebook uh, about uh, how to find that uh, quite pricely model today and my idea is neither to search for it because really it is a, a disappointing kit I take this box I guess it was in the late 90s you know when I was working in the Revel Italy uh, dealer it was imported for Revel Italy and uh, I remember that it was nearly impossible to sell boxes of this Ari kit because already at the time it was absolutely awkward. It was uh, a terrible model. I mean, you open the box, the box art is uh, pretty old looking, the design of the box is uh, completely fantasy. You know, something like the very old Marui kits, uh, that, that level, you know, I think is in the same level of the Porsche 936 that you can find from from that company you know the level is the same so what you basically have inside the box is a, a quite an accurate body uh, of this GTS version and nothing else because the interior doesn't exist uh, the dash is fantasy and uh, the wheels are uh, in my box they were uh, became just powder you know in that old box is the rubber is uh, uh, really powder so uh, talking about the model Ari just made a version with uh, the flares uh, with this part that was uh, they had several different uh, versions of the Pantera I guess it is mostly some fiberglass bodies and so on because the the one that I find online mostly had a kind of uh, uh, flares on the on the wheels that were with bolts you know with rivets over in a, in a kind of way like today they do with RWB and uh, Liberty Walks and um, yeah so the model was itself the proportion was quite decently you know not a perfectly accurate but it was a good base in my opinion then I was just searching for a version that was for my appetite you know it was extremely disappointing because really the lack of detail mostly made you buy a body in that box there is nothing else that a body that approximative body because for example all this area where there is the cap filler of the car and the and the rear window and completely messed up this shape is not completely defined i had to scratch build this detail in my first attempt to build up uh, this model the wheels uh, were completely wrong and ugly in the look with the terrible chrome that we find in the boxes from the 70s i guess early 70s i guess and uh, I anyway had that box and I remember that I, when I was working for Revel I think that uh, carton, so the big uh, carton boxes, uh, it means the 24 pieces uh, of uh, models inside were sold for something like five, five dollars, not more, you know, and nobody anyway wanted them because the model was disappointing like that. I remember that I was also dealer for this company 
and uh, when the shops uh, used to buy from us uh, they wanted to send back the item because the item was absolutely ugly to see impossible to sell you know it was already the years the 90s was the year or so of the of the full detailed tamiya models it was neither cheap at the time i mean that if you really had to apply the, the correct price for that model became um, quite pricey for uh, an ugly kit you know the car is nice but the kit was absolutely uh, uh, disgusting you know and uh, i took i think a couple of them or uh, five around around five because they really costed nothing you know and uh, during the years i sold them when i had the shop in milano and it was also there extremely tricky because people like the card and they open the box they close and they buy it at me so it was not uh, not at all a good uh, a good uh, deal for me and uh, i keep one that is this model and i wanted to find a proper version for this car and i started to search online in the late 90s beginning of the 2000 uh, a proper version of a model that i like so much and i crossed this library that was uh, i tried to uh, search the history for this car but it was uh, a little tricky you know this was the car that have been uh, featured in the le mans classic event of 2006 where i was there inside the gt40s with the uh, gt40 enthusiast club uk and we were a crew inside Roy Snook GT40 MK1 replica of course but it was a parade race and it was extremely uh, fun to race in the big Le Mans art with uh, these guys together with uh, GT40 MK1 MK2 uh, Ford GT at the time because the newest Ford uh, that we have today still didn't exist so the Ford GT was the, the biggest ever and in the straight it was impressive to see this car really and I crossed this car uh in the in the paddock you know they had a lot of tent where a private uh, team uh, used to show up their car and i remember it was funny because uh, when me and my friend were crossing around this pantera uh, stands uh, there was three cars it was this one an ordinary red and black and the blue uh, one i think from germany you know extremely nice that i started to look at that because i like so much blue metallic car and i remember that the fia officer arrived to me approached to me probably because i was dressed at the kind of mechanic you know with uh, short pants t-shirt with a lot of sponsors over and he approached to me with the drill and he said you have to drill this car and you have to place the fire extinguisher because they don't have inside so i was there with the opening door of a pantera historical pantera with the drill in my hands and the owner arrived completely worried it was a german over ah, what are you doing, what are you doing? so I, I i will absolutely not drill somebody else's car you know but it was funny and i remember that i seen this car and what impressed me at the time already was that the dimension of the wheels used in this car was in the in the way of a Formula One car. You know, they were extremely wide. They were really, really impressive, probably oversized in a kind of dragster or hot road version. You know, it was really, really oversized for the proportion of the car. And uh, uh, on track, it was impressive to hear the sound. You know, the, I think it was uh, powered by a 351 uh, for the engine so uh, the exhaust was free of course uh, there was no uh, silencer so the car was extremely uh, uh, impressive to see in, in reality you know then i found some pictures of the actual car and i wanted to start to build up the model i think it was 2009 when i started the building of this kit from the old Ari kit i immediately had an issue because at the time probably in 2009 you know in 12 years uh, I think my skill is a little improved so today I can manage much better such issues and uh, improve also the details but I had an issue on the flares because I wanted to I remember that the car in reality had these uh, uh, flares separated from the body so you clearly see that there was the body of the Pantera under and they applied over the flares fitted on the on the wheels in the dimension of the giant wheel that this car had and uh, I remember that I had a problem to find the separation between the line of the flare and the body, you know, flare was surely fiberglass, the body, I think it was aluminium, I don't think it was fiberglass at the time, so I remember that there was a line with rivets and I tried and tried, tried to make that detail, but you know, being over a curved area was extremely complicated for me to have a, a separation line in this tricky area, you know. Uh, Tom Charada made the, the line entering under here exactly like in the GT40 so it's it was very very complicated and I tried to make it with some plastic melted over the flare at the time but uh, uh, I, I then went on with the painting process and the decalizing process so you can cross some pictures of this build I made in 2009 of the car nearly completed it was 80% completed I dare to say about about the body mostly 
and then during the years happened that the gloss that I used at the time it was a 2k you know 2k is a gloss that uh, uh, doesn't fit so much my taste because it make all the car looking like a big candy and uh, the glossy effect is uh, uh, very strong uh, uh, quite unrealistic for a race car probably is much more fitting over uh, uh, street cars and so on so I have that product is uh, three components you know because you have the 2k the thinner and the hardener so you have to find the, 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 the mixing of that and then you usually many modelers also use that to cover mistakes in the painting a cracking in the painting because it's really like a kind of sealing of everything that you have made and it's quite unrealistic in my opinion over a race car you know there is very few guys around that are, are able to use the uh, 2k in the proper way in my opinion this is just my guess you know and at the time i used that uh, glossy paint that simply stretched so much the stuff under because probably during the catalyzation of the clear it happened that it became straightened you know and uh, what happened it was that the plastic part that they placed on the first start to separate from the rest of the body so I, I was starting to look a black line because the underbody was uh, primer red but the plastic of this kit is originally is black and I see that this black line became wider and wider and wider and then it became nearly uh, two millimeters of a line that should be in reality just like uh, this just like this line you see so it should be just a panel line that I made here engraving in this uh, single that second attempt. So I get so angry and they placed the model apart for several years. Nearly wanted to trash everything, but then I start to search around and nobody ever did a Pantera GTS in a better condition, in like a better kit, you know. I took it back now in uh, 2021 during COVID. So everybody's locked at home and uh, you have to produce model as much as you can, you know. For me, this is a work, so it's uh, something that I do for clients and so on. And this is the stuff that I do in my spare time when I am free from other bigger works. And uh, I wanted to uh, keep an end to this model and start to look around. Then I crossed it to a guy, I think it was in a Jim Drew for forum, uh, f uh, sorry, Facebook page, where he attempted to build up uh, a Pantera GTS from Testor. And I realized that it was a better model around because looking the overall shape of the Testor model, I think it was better than the area, mostly in the areas around the rims and the, some proportions, some details. The model is crap, also the Testor, also this guy uh, making the compliments to my kit. He also he told me, uh, yes, the, 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 the Testor is, uh, is, is crap also. Um, and so I went on with this one, just of course being 20, 12 years later I wanted to add some details so what I did basically it was to completely strip down the model and uh, start to plan something different I already had the decal made by Andrew Z uh, Andrew is an incredible designer for this decal so he really spot the color spot the dimension and this was anyway a work that also he did 12 years ago for me because we are friends since uh, a lifetime now I think I know him since uh, 20 25 years right now incredibly skilled designer he, could absolutely work for cartograph could absolutely work for major companies you know and uh, and uh, is really really good 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 in this uh, uh, designing of decals you know so we already had the decal that was a step forward because uh, we don't have to drawing from uh, to draw from zero with new pictures and so on a complete new library and what i wanted to do basically was to give a better shape and a better proportion to the body that I did so when the model was scrapped I started to rework in the proper way the fenders here and the wheel arch you know and I was uh, uh, still with the experience that I made in my previous uh, uh, build up of this period that was the Porsche R RWB uh, the 911 what I call 911S it was the early version of the RWB with the flares uh, based on the early Porsche with the uh, with a bumper uh, without the arrow, you know, it was really the first series of the port that they made like a uh, raw welt. And the idea was the same, so I created an area uh, with plastic art and then I filled it up with uh, a filler from Tamiya, the white filler that became hardened with channel acrylate over to become stone hard. And when the stuff is uh, completely dry, usually uh, I let it rest for, for, for one night mostly. And then you start to work with uh, the proper uh, drill and the, and, and the, and the proxon or the Dremel to create the proper shape, you know, it should be uh, very complicated, honestly, in this area. For me, it takes several, several times to study the picture because it had to be around and define it in the line. So it's a really, really a complicated area. Thinking back, 
because some guys, some good friends, uh, uh, gave me the tip also maybe to produce this stuff in raisin, you know, uh, according to what we all said, uh, there is no decent model of Pantera, so why not create just a simple transkit uh, model about wheels, about the fenders, uh, and about the minor modification that you can have for uh, the, 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 the Fujimi latest kit of Pantera, you know, but then I did not, uh, mostly because my idea was that I already I'm very far away from my uh, Italian production uh, place uh, now. No, it's I think nearly nearly one year at the time away from that place now, and uh, I cannot follow so much the production down there. And they already so much have items stuck there that didn't went to production. I'm still waiting for the NSX GT3 Evo that is already in production, but no news today because I'm here, not because of the guy, you know, and uh, mostly because this Pantera have the flares that are size and over this giant wheels that I applied here so it should be a trans kit with decal just for this car many guys like this version many guys don't like this version so it's a really a matter of taste I didn't want to produce a trans kit specifically only for this car that I like so much in Le Mans Classic 2006 you know it should be from what I read around MM Gallo should be the driver of the uh, ex Italian Jolly Club only Pantera uh, prepared in the 80s you know and it was a the real winning Pantera we had in Italy so probably the car was the same and uh, I think uh, she was owned by a Roma team there is a story around if you search for uh, uh, Marcello Gallo Pantera GTS there is the story that you can find it's written in Italian but you can uh, absolutely translate it and uh, the biggest uh, feature that I wanted to do in this model was then to add something that is uh, more uh, uh, likely today of the way that I build up this model so I didn't just want it to build up like a curbside model uh, using just the shape of the Pantera the shape is fantastic but you know uh, it's it's a trend that I have right now when I build up model for myself like this one is and it's to make some little details some little extra to make it little special you know compared to the, my ordinary production this model I decided to use let me see if it works because it's always a little complicated and here we go in this model I wanted to add an engine inside so what I did basically was to find from an older Revel, bo Revel uh, monogram kit I wanted to add the, the engine from a NASCAR so the, the, the engine should be a 351 coming from a NASCAR car of the 70s that I saved I would like to, sh to see if I can show you they place mini magnet inside let me see if it works like it should be here we go it was not uh, my lucky to find the spot for the antenna here I hope you can see something let me see if with the lights I can show you better parts of the engine there it is uh, I placed micro magnets here, micro magnets fixed with glue on the body and this uh, uh, metal pole to nearly invisible you can see now to show up the engine so she can also stand in the open position and there is a uh, magnet also in the upper side of the of the rear bonnet you know then I added the detail in the inner parts let me see if I can I hope you can see that in, in the video you know there is also a frame inside the, the, the bonnet and I wanted to add the, the engine inside this, uh, this car to, to show something particular, you know Pantera had all the probably a fiberglass body shape inside the, the wheel arches, you know, to cover the, 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 the brakes and the mechanical part in the lower part of the chassis and uh, so I think it looks quite cool, even more because it is not in a stacked and in a fixed position completely open, it is just uh, uh, something that you can remove, place the bar inside like in a real car and close it with uh, uh, the proper magnet, later on we will do it if I don't crash something, and of course I also leave the hinges inside of the, of the bonnet, they are very very uh, delicate uh, hinges up here made in metal, and uh, I can also take it completely away to show uh, how it fits. Of course, being in a hided position is a little more complicated to place it back the bonnet, you know. But it's something that uh, for uh, picturing purposes and so on, I can absolutely do, you know, mostly for 
a competition and to show up the model I can use this configuration you know because the model is quite stable so remember that that pole down there is uh, fixed by magnets so unless the car don't take a hit or something that uh, strikes over her you can uh, keep the car completely with open bonnet position without losing the the, the shape uh, of the beautiful Pantera, the aggressive shape of the of the Pantera de Tommaso. Uh, the interior, the interior was uh, not existing in the Ari model, so uh, I had to build up. I used the seat coming from a Porsche 911 935, I think it was, and um, added some the usual uh, seat belt with bucklets and so on. Place a fire extinguisher. I rebuilt it. I don't think from the video you can see it so much. Let's try, but I don't think it works. I added the steering wheel from a racing car, I made up the dash, there is some picture, you know, in the build-up sequence. And, um, and that's it, so the model any, anyway was finished with the same decal, now the service that print this decal is uh, much more advanced also in technology, so they became much more better in the white, in the yellow, this is yellow over blue, so it's extremely uh, complicated to give uh, the proper uh, deepness to the colors used and uh, thanks god I saved the Pantera frame from the first build and uh, that was still the original one and instead the, the yellow is a little bit different from the other yellow but it's something that you cannot know so much and uh, and that's it you know the, the wheels have been uh, completely remade I think the wheels are coming from a Formula 1 car at least the rear one the front one I honestly don't remember because I said it is stuff coming from 2009 and that's it, uh, model is pretty nice, I like it so for much, Pantera is something really really special, you know, near like a GT40, the, the spirit is the same one, you know, if you read the proper story of Pantera, uh, it's very interesting because it could have been a really mighty powerful race car, but uh, for the story of the car it didn't went that way, you know, it was a, a little different what happened in reality, so uh, I like it so much, I think it's a big big head in my collection and uh, really really takes the shape. My tip of course is to avoid this Ari model because it's absolutely not worth it and wait maybe somebody making uh, this car at least in racing, you know, at least in uh, at least with a better body. The problem is that you don't have anything to fit under this car so it is not something that you can produce like a trans kit for something else you have to make this specific model completely and it's not absolutely so easy because if you check picture online every car is different from the other that's it uh, let's see if we can close the bonnet now without making disasters there it is magnet inside you see and then you close it and the line of Pantera is there and you can say look fantastic car really thanks for watching guys see you in the next one